Hey, welcome back to a Turbo Talk. I'm Turbo, sitting here in the green room at the homestead. Just finished up a 20 mile run for my second marathon in like six weeks. Is that crazy? I don't know if you saw my other marathon, but I, I can run marathons. I did one in Oregon um, on October 2nd. And I'm getting ready to do one on November 5th. The Monumental, or Be Monumental. So anyway, so here we go. This is a Turbo How To. Alright? Video. How to run a marathon. Or maybe I should say... Uh... Yeah. What does it take to run a marathon? There we go. This video is what does it take to run a marathon? If you want to run a marathon, this video is one that says that this is what it takes. All right, so first of all, the most important thing it is is that uh, you got to have the commitment. You just got to sign up. Okay? If you don't do that, well, then you have nothing to even start with. Second, and uh, above all that, well, you got to have a plan. How am I going to get to running a marathon? That's it. And, of course, you know, there's a third step. Doing it. And so... Second step's kind of like one of those things. Yeah, the plan. All right. So do you practice or do you train? Yeah. So, and I'm going to get into the better part of this just in a minute. But so, well, so practice means to do what it is that you want to do. And training then would be very specific to some element of what it is that you're wanting to do all right so here's the thing so so uh, all right well i hear all about heart rate and i hear about distance and, and all that kind of stuff and what have you i just want you to know right now that okay time that's your that's your greatest measurement the only reason why time's your greatest measurement that you have is because it's not even real and it doesn't exist. Therefore, if everybody's using it, well then it's got to be the best measurement. And so it's always time. Time. Uh, how long did I run? In time. Or, right. And then, of course... Because heart rate can be so skewed by hydration, it's very important, but at the same time, it is actually way secondary to um, time. How long did it take me to do this? All right. Heart rate sometimes gives us a really good measurement of the difficulty tasks. And so, therefore, you know, if you can do it within reason, you know, knowing that the hydration level of your body is going to skew it, and therefore, it can't be the absolute, but you can use it as a guideline, because it's really what you need to do, right? And so, uh, but, here we go, or not, but, but uh, so furthermore, right, heart rate is important, <clears throat> but it would be second to, to, to time, and then... And then, of course, um, equivalent to second in heart rate would basically be the distance that you run. Yeah. And so, you need to know, how long did I run? Did I express energy levels that were ridiculous uh, or spectacular? Or, and then, what, what, so what, was, what was that distance? And so, there we go. So a marathon, that, so that brings us all the way down to it all. So number one thing to know, if you, with all this other stuff that I just talked about, is that if you want to be a marathoner, 
you got to be able to run the distance. So therefore, you just got to start running. So the distance doesn't have to be 26 miles, or, or at least, you know, it does. <laughs> it's 26.2 miles if you're doing a marathon. And so that's what the distance has to be. And once you do that, the monkey's off your back. But nonetheless, you know, so preparing for one, you don't have to actually run one to prepare for one. You know, the last, uh, I don't know what it is, is, you know, the last four to six miles is basically on your head. It's, in, it's what's up here. So that's something I don't even really get into on this video. But then, it's all, so number one is, is that you got to be able to run as far as you want to be able to run. And so... Um, that can be done in two measurements. One is your long run. And I think 20 is enough. Some say 22. Some will say more. Nonetheless, then you're kind of like your measurable, you know, um, what is it that you're doing? What is it that you're practicing? And so practice then would be, you know, um, uh, your weekly mileage. And so, as your weekly mileage, you know, you got to get your weekly mileage above the marathon distance. The more week, you should probably try to double it if you could. <laughs> but, you know, there again, it depends on how old you are, what you're doing, and how fast you want to go. And, you know, what. It, there's a whole lot. There's a whole lot. To, but let's stay with the simple stuff. All right. So then, finally, all right, comes the second most important thing about doing the marathon after being able to run some distance and knowing all the other stuff that would be to set a goal yeah it's just that simple the first goal should be the most obtainable one you can get and that first goal should be basically you know um, the most miraculous uh, the most phenomenal the most overcoming, it's absolutely the very, very, very best goal. It's the only goal that one could actually really accomplish, you know, even whether they had set anything greater. And that's the finish. Yeah. Right off the bat, you got to sit there and say, I got to finish this thing if I'm going to start it. Number one goal got to set the goal. It can't be real if you don't set it. But nonetheless, that's not what it actually really is because setting the goal means that, well, you can actually throw speed into the thing if you want to. I usually save that to number three, but, but nonetheless, yeah. Set a goal. So my first goal is always the most obtainable goal that I can actually possibly get, and it's probably the most honorable one, is that if I'm going to go run a marathon, well, then the thing that it is is I'm going to complete a marathon. But then, because I am so avid on walking as well as running, and so we are all individuals, and we all need whatever we need, and we all need... So walking's never been an issue for me. I've done it quite a bit, and quite a few marathons. I've, in fact, I walked two full marathons in an Ironman event, or, or uh, um, an Ironman I walked two marathons. It just, I, the first one was absolutely planned. The second one was nearly all of it. Nonetheless, it doesn't matter. But the, so because I really preach that if you need to walk, walk. But if I'm going to finish a marathon and I can do it running, well, that's an accomplishment. So that's always my second goal. And it should be everybody's really... In some ways, but it doesn't have to be because I believe in the run walk programs. It's not that. It's not that at all. I, I just think that anybody that can do this is you know, like pretty phenomenal. But then I get into the third goal, and that's when you start looking at what I believe is really important when it comes to like, all right, so if you're going to do more than one, all right, so you might as well start reaching into this. And now we're start looking into the less obtainable goals. All right, and so. Uh, so this one here is, you know, strategy, you know, so steady state would be the perfect. But if you could run progressive 
that would be second. The only thing that you don't want to do is fall off. Alright. So there you go. Now, we move into more, the most important part. Alright, so this is where we get to throw all of the uh, unattainable goals. <laughs> yeah, that's like where you get to start setting paces, although, so you can actually set an obtainable pace goal, but then you know, gotta, so then you gotta move into another one, so, the first one, but then, after that, you're in your second goal, and so you're, out of, uh, you're uh, into the unattainable, and then, you know, and then you start putting yourself into a position where, not only am I gonna run this particular pace, but I'm gonna, um, uh, do this in my category, and next thing you know, you know, you're qualifying for Boston and, and the whole nine yards. All right. So, but those last few goals are always going to be the unattainable ones. You know, you've got to have the unattainable goals as well as the obtainable goals. And so I feel like that's really important because those will always be over your head. Because, well, don't set them if you don't plan on doing them. <laughs> Nonetheless, all right, that is, uh, man, I think that's, I hit the end of it all. I think that's how to do, okay, yeah, how to prepare yourself and complete a marathon 101 from Turbo. Hey, I'm glad you joined in with me, and like, subscribe, and most importantly, be your best. Goodbye.